face as well. And it looks exactly like this. It has the same design philosophy. So you can see, continue playing like previous games you've launched. Let me go take you through the tabs. So this is the gaming tab. So you have your games. Let me do this. Sometimes it looks better. So you have your games here. Basically, it's the games that you see here, right? So these two communicate. I don't know if you can see, but now it actually says that we have a device connected. So you can always see if like a device is connected at all, at all times. And I wanted to have that front and center because I wanted the user to be able to tell if a device is connected or not very easily. So you have the streaming section. This is what I told you about before. All this, all this functionality was one tab each. Now it's in one place. And you, of course you have your live streaming which you can like share to Twitch or whatever. Performance metrics. This is actually one of the most useful features of AMD Link. You have your tuning here. See, that's what I said. This is a laptop. So it says what man is not supported. So that's why we said that it would be best if you guys tried these things out with a discrete graphics card to see the full user interface. And over here, you cannot see this because we're not, uh, we ha don't have a game right now, is basically this thing is like, like you did with Fraps where you started measuring performance, stopped measuring performance, you got like an average. So it's a very quick way to see what kind of performance you're getting. And as I said, this is all the settings of the app, conveniently in one place. So with that, what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna start streaming. So don't hate me on the big buttons. <laughs> I did that specifically because I wanted to make sure that I, I could, you know, step on everything and it would work. The good thing about, uh, this uh, app is that it's customizable. So this is actually a, custom a customized uh, on-screen mm -hmm. controller that I did. I removed some stuff that I didn't need. So the user can essentially make a customized controller apart from your, you know, from the default ones. They can uh, make it larger, smaller, remove stuff, add stuff, make them more tr translucent, like more uh, see-through more. Right, because uh, that's very, uh, very uh, useful. And the reason that I find customizing controllers very useful is simply because you know how some interfaces, when you're playing a game and you have the HUD behind, uh, these things actually like get in the way. So different games have different sort of sort of interfaces. So for me, it's nice to be able to have like a different. A profile for let's say Overwatch or a different profile for Grim Dawn because I'm weird and I like playing platform games and so on and so forth right so with that let's launch is the launcher ready okay let's launch port lines so one of the cool things that AMD Link has and continues to have that with 3.0 obviously is that the desktop streaming and the actual game streaming is seamless. So you don't actually need to stop, you know, desktop streaming and go back to game streaming or like you exited the game so now it's over. You can actually control this with this and it will work. So what I want to tell you right now is that uh, Boost is enabled. You see this little green fella here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is a very small visual indication that Chill is working. And you will see why we did that small little dot in quite a while. But it shows you that the feature is working and it will actually show you the level of the work it's doing. So you will see this thing updated. So if it does more work, you will see a couple more dots here. So you will know that uh, Boost is doing more work. As I said, Boost is like dynamic. This means that we have a setting that 
I don't know if you remember, we said like the minimum, you know, resolution that it adjusts the resolution. It's it's not going from like 100 to 50. That's it, or 100. It gradually scales. So depending on how fast you're going or how fast you're moving around, it will do its magic. And so if you're moving very fast, it can go down to 50% because you won't notice. If you're moving like very slowly, you have like a horror game, for instance, I don't know, or something like that, it will not be as like uh, evident. So it will not do much work because the aim here is for you to not know that this thing exists. We want you to be able to not know that this thing is adjusting performance. So let me launch that thing. Do continue. And the reason I have a save game, guys, is so when I first got the game, uh, so I wanted to play it very fast because you know Borderlands is like a very popular game, right? The thing that I realized, you cannot skip cutscenes. So I was like, let me play the game already. And like cutscene and then like another cutscene and then like another, and I was like pressing escape all the time, but it wouldn't work. So this is the best mouse in the history of mouses. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, don't, don't hate on me. So, let's launch Radiant Software. As you can see, now that we launched it, the interface, as Terry said, uh, understands that you're inside a game and it's giving you rel relevant stuff. So, you can see the FPS. You can see like uh, the GPU, VRAM, CPU, all that stuff. And I want I want you guys just to see that. So now we didn't go to the generic game settings. We went inside the Borderlands like settings, right? Because it understands that you're playing Borderlands 3 right now. And it wants to show you, you see, you, you have some stuff like last open this week, how many minutes you're playing and that's too few because we've been traveling around the world and I didn't have time to actually, you know, <laughs> although that would be nice. So, and here you have some stuff that you can adjust from within your game. So you can see radium boost here is enabled, enhancing is disabled. So depending on what you want, you get. And of course, as I said, this is the full interface. And one of the new th features that we have that I find extremely useful is this little guy here, the browser. So I will admit that the, these days when I'm playing games, I'm a little bit more impatient than I used to be. I get stuck a lot in various games. Uh, so what I used to do is, uh, you know, I'll tab, load Firefox, go to YouTube, see like a walkthrough, whatever, go back. Oh, that didn't work. I'll tab, go to, you know the drill. So with this, you never actually have to leave your game anymore, right? So this is basically the Dark Souls button. I consider that a cheat, but a good cheat. <laughs> so this allows you to go to whatever website you want to go, see a video, see a walk or read a walkthrough and like go back. Simple as that. So as I said, this is, this is the actual full interface. That's the good thing about it. It's not like it's this. So you remember last year with the overlay that we had, we had radiant settings, which was like the full interface with all the options. And there was like the overlay, which had like a limited set of options. This is the full thing. So the reason I wanted to come here is because I wanted to enable the overlay. I'm hoping this will work. If not, overlay, let's see, metric settings. Let me go back. Super So, yeah, this wouldn't happen very well using this. So let me go here. 
Let me go to options, visuals, and right here, enable the performance stats. So you can see some happiness. So can you see this, this thing over here? So you will notice that when I move around like very quickly, and as you can see, my mouse pad is the best, so apologies for that. So now that I'm moving, you can see the performance going up. Now that I'm not, it will settle to less. Let me see because this, ah, I forgot my mouse. Cannot move very quickly. Let me check with that. So right now it's adjusting performance. You can see the, the FPS going up, right? It went up to 80. Because I'm moving around. And now we went back to 57. So let me go back here and do this. So what I want you to notice is that when I'm moving around very fast, like this, can you see a difference? it actually dynamically adjusts the resolution. But when you're stationary like this, obviously, yeah. When you're stationary, it doesn't do such thing, such a thing. So that's the beauty. Oh, this thing works. <laughs> so, let me see. Oh, by the way, one of the other things that people told me about this thing is, hey, dude, why doesn't this thing rotate? <laughs> that was actually the first, the second thing that everybody was emailing me about, like, make this thing rotate. So I did. So now it rotates. Let me, let me go back to Borderlands. So as you can see, you can play here as well. I mean, what? And it's quite responsive. I mean, if you guys wanna check it out. Oh, by the way, Boost works right now, here. Right? I mean, this doesn't mean that because I'm using this, this thing doesn't work. This continues to like work. So I'll tell you guys a little secret. I suck at first person shooters with a controller, like so much. I can I admire the people that I can actually play with a controller, first person shooters, but me, I'm your keyboard mouse kind of guy. I'm afraid, old school. So these are our two most like important features. Uh, if you guys wanna ask like a question or like if you wanna see the responsiveness of that thing or just look around, play a little bit around, let me know.